Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to another update on this Tuesday night. It is the Earthmaster out here. Uh, February 20th, 2024 is the date, about 10.15 here, California time. And uh, latest earthquake activity, see what we got here across the globe. Looks like a 2.9 here across the Mediterranean area. We'll get to this here in just a little bit. I want to cover the space weather activity first. We do have 3590 here, a ginormous sunspot area coming off the northeastern quadrant of the sun. Getting into position here uh, to face the earth here in the coming days. So this is kind of a uh, of a big deal. It is looking like it's uh, getting some complexity around the center core of the sunspot region. So continue to watch that. That's uh, quite a large sunspot area. Um, that is upgraded here from a beta class up to a, um, looks like a beta gamma class right now. So we're getting a little bit of complexity going on here. The increasing complexity means that there's an in, uh, increasing threat of higher flare activity. So looks like uh, things will be kicking up here. We could be looking at a, uh, a growing large developing sunspot and just about the time as it will be facing the earth here, we could see some rather large flare activity. Right now, 99% chance for a C flare, M flare, 30% chance X flare, around 5%, but that could increase here in the coming days. Uh, the Aurora forecast right now, fairly minimal, not a whole lot going on there across the Auroras. All right, uh, earthquake activity here. I know there's more going on there than that page. Uh, we do have one little earthquake up here in Northern California right now. We've got a, looks like a 2.2 here, about eight kilometers deep. They're at the uh, Mendocino Triple Point Junction area, very close to the plate boundary there. Um, that movement here, I kind of want to see what's going on there with the uh, tremor activity across the area. Uh, only, wow, <laughs> that's a major drop here in tremor. Uh, it was somewhat elevated here over the last week, but we only got 15 epicenters here of tremor uh, there around the, uh, oh, southern coast here of Oregon uh, so a big drop off there in tremor activity not a whole lot going on through the Pacific Northwest in terms of earthquake activity yeah there's a handful of smaller quakes out here around Mount St. Helens but technically uh, those are super duper small quakes and really not uh, a whole lot of concern uh, a small amount of earthquake activity out here on the Concord Fault uh, it's been a little while since we've seen a little bit of movement out here, but it looks like a 2.4 and a couple other smaller quakes there along this area, the southern portion here of the Concord Fault. Continue to watch that. Quite a few fault systems out here across the uh, the Bay Area. Very capable of producing some large damaging earthquakes. Uh, but for now, just a couple smaller quakes. Uh, there in the Southern California area, we've got a handful of earthquakes out here in this little region. Uh, you can see this shape here across the map this little uh, area this is a major uh, stress area in terms of the plate boundary now you got to think here the north american plate here um, off to the east and you got the pacific plate here to the west right pacific plate somewhat going up towards the northwest while the north american plate heading down uh, to the southeast respectfully out here and this area kind of acts as a spring if you will um, so I, I think this area is starting to see a little bit of strain out here just with this individual earthquake activity uh, here in this little this little section. You can kind of see it here. Uh, you can draw pretty much a line here. Uh, and it, and it kind of makes, uh, I don't know what kind of shape, but uh, this whole area right here kind of showing a little bit of movement uh, out here in the region today. I think there's a little bit more... Um, damaging potential earthquake activity out here than people lead or than, than what most people think uh it's just you know this the garlock fault shear zone it's a shear zone out here kind of goes opposite of what we're normally seeing in terms of the fault systems from northwest to southeast such as the plate boundary right so this is odd you're obviously going to build up some strain out there across the odd fault systems and this stretches uh you know across this area here so we will continue to watch that a uh, handful of earthquakes out here today in Southern California, scattered out and about. There's really no specific main zones out there. I look at the 2.5 map and above. Well, you got it. Not a whole lot going on. So most of this microquake activity, but we'll continue to watch that 
Uh, it is showing a little bit of movement out there in the Garlock Fault Shear Zone, Idaho. Uh, beautiful area up here. Still seeing some movement around the Sawtooth Fault System here. Uh, this area is a... Uh, it, it's a zone that has seen some uh, recent earthquake activity here in the last couple of years as far as um, decent movement, like a nine, uh, I was going to say a nine-pointer, but a six-pointer. Uh, this area not capable of producing a nine-pointer. I want to go over here real quick and just check out some history out here across the Idaho area uh, in terms of uh, some larger movement. So let's go over here to the USGS map. They have a pretty decent earthquake catalog book out here. We're going to look up uh, 5.0 and above. <clears throat> We're just going to go back here. Um, oh, about to the year 1000. We'll do a little bit of time traveling here uh, and see what's going on out here in the state of Idaho. Um, obviously, the, the earthquake that I'm kind of looking for is going to be the... If we get too close to Yellowstone, we're going to see a lot of earthquake activity, but we'll cover right right about there. Hopefully this does not blow up my computer. Zip. Um, still loading. That's oh goodness. I bet you there's a lot of earthquakes here. That's a little crazy. Okay, well that's really not that bad. So the one, the earthquake that I'm looking for is this earthquake right here, just a couple years ago. Uh, has it been four years already? See, in my mind, I was thinking it was just a couple years ago, but it's actually been four years ago. Uh, yeah, 6.5 near Stanley, Idaho. I know a lot of people correct me when I say Stanley, but I'm, um, I'm just being kind of um, kind of a comedian in a way with the Stanley. But it is, yeah, Stanley, Idaho. Uh, so there's still quite a bit of aftershock, it seems like. Years later, uh, we've seen a handful you know, of earthquakes here in the last month around that area. Uh, that could be, you know, obviously some aftershock activity out there occurring against the Sawtooth Fault System. But yeah, that was a pretty decent earthquake back there in 2020 uh, for that 6.5 earthquake. Struck things uh, pretty nicely out there. I know uh, there was a couple different earthquakes that struck out here in that year. There was a six-pointer down here in the uh, uh, Nevada area as well. Idaho, I remember that pretty well, but I can't believe it's been four years. Uh, there's a, uh, a little bit more active fault system out here the lost river fault it looks like there's a couple other fault systems that run here as well uh that can see some uh some decent quakes a couple fives out here through the uh through the years mostly in the 80s it looks like that's kind of odd back in the early 80s uh but you know far as the largest earthquake activity out here you know that's uh uh, the Hebgen Lake, Mont that's in Montana, 6.9 earthquake, it looks like. It's going to be one of the largest earthquakes there in Idaho. That's a decent earthquake down here um, off of that fault system that I just told you about there, the Lost River um, fault there, the southern end, it looks like. So uh, there's no doubt large earthquake activity can occur out here. And this was back in 1983, so uh, some of these earthquakes up north there, look like it may be some aftershock activity because uh, those those aftershocks there occurred in that same region uh, in the same time period. Uh, but no doubt, you know, things can build up. These fault systems sometimes take many years, maybe hundreds of years to build up enough strain. Uh, you know, this is obviously not a plate boundary. There's not a whole lot of stress built up over time. But, uh, you know, these mountain ranges formed, formed um, from obviously tectonic stress and fault systems out here so accumulation of stress builds up over time and these earthquakes can definitely pop up uh, that was a, a definitely a decent earthquake out there back in 1983 i don't remember this i mean 1983 when i was a kid I wasn't really into earthquakes i was more into you know playing with cars and whatnot but uh yeah, that, that was definitely a decent earthquake. So Idaho can get some big-time earthquakes out here. I just wanted to cover a little bit of, of earthquake activity out here across the area because I get asked quite a few questions about, um, you know, the the commonness, so to speak, of earthquake activity out here. Uh, but, yeah, obviously uh, some strain building up out here throughout the years. One earthquake here, so, or actually a couple earthquakes south of Helena, outside of Townsend area. Looks like a 2.8 earlier this morning. Local time, that's my time, 3 o'clock in the Pacific. 
Um, Montana, definitely no stranger to large earthquakes, right? Got Yellowstone out here. It's a hot spot here in the North American plate. Nothing showing up here in terms of, of uh, earthquake activity. But let's see what we got here uh, on the uh, map. Just want to double check here. 220. That uh, looks like the current time. 221.0530. Is that right? 221.0630. So I guess that would be about right here. A couple smaller earthquakes. Nothing really major going on out here. Definitely some windy vents it looks like out here. But as uh, far as any uh, major movement here at Yellowstone, it's just <clears throat> it's not happening at all. I mean, we can check out uh, you know seismograph stations daily, but also at the same time we can check out uh, these GPS stations out here. And uh, for the most part, that's from 2020. Uh, that is from 2020 as well. Let's see here. I know there's a few stations out here that are operable uh, and up to date. In 2024, the general trend though here has been, uh, you know, deflation there across the Yellowstone area. Obviously, we will know um, of inflation events uh, that take place. This looks like a, an antenna adjustment. There's no way it just jumped up out of the blue in 2012. That was just a uh, antenna. Or some type of uh, instrument adjustment there. But uh, we'll cover that uh, when I can get some better GPS stations out here. Because there's uh, quite a few of these are offline it looks like. Or uh, malfunctioning. Either way. <clears throat> excuse me. Alright, what else we got here for earthquake activity out here? Um, choo -choo -choo. Nothing going on across the eastern portion of the country. Pretty quiet. Texas still seeing, you know, this area down here is just, it's almost more active than California. I'm not even joking. Look at the last 30 days of earthquake activity. Let me show you guys. This is pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty decent in terms of all magnitudes. 465 earthquakes out here. So it's got a little bit of a linear fashion out here across Texas. And, uh, you know, there, there's no doubt that uh, these are related to these wastewater disposal ponds. Uh, there's a, a pretty giant one out there in the desert of Texas. Not a swimming pool. You can see that very obviously. And there's quite a few pumping operations out here. And, and uh, you know, these oil tanks and holding facilities, it's all it's uh, definitely related out there. Uh, again, nothing going on across the eastern portion of the country. Uh, Tonga area. Looks like a little bit of movement going on here across the area. The latest one, a 5.2. Fairly deep here. 355 kilometers into the subduction zone here. This is the surface area of the plate boundary underneath this region. Obviously, the subduction zone. Get volcanoes going on across this area. Uh, fairly deep earthquake this morning though, 4.8. That's a uh, that's a good one. Definitely looks like this area looks uh, looks like it wants to uh, continue to uh, kick up here. Not a whole lot across North Island or South Island, New Zealand in terms of any movement. I'm sure there's some smaller earthquake activity, but uh, really nothing of major concern. 3.2 out here across the Java Trench, and. Um, you know, really though, looking at the globe here, it looks uh, it looks fairly quiet. It looks, uh, you know, obviously there's earthquake activity every single day in various areas, but there's not a whole lot of um, interesting development out here today. Uh, obviously, that could change soon. Uh, five, four point nine looks like down here in the northern edge of the South Sandwich Trench. It's going to be down here across the area. That's a that's that's a ways up there. This area has been seeing some movement here over the last thirty days, up and down the board. But this is the farthest area northwest here on the plate boundary. So I um, might want to keep an eye on this. Obviously, uh, a major subduction zone. This area I did see an eight pointer. And quite a few, uh, there were some 7s and some 6s out here as well back in 2020. 
Uh, I keep getting the years mixed up. I think it was 2021. It was the year of three eight-pointers. We had one down along the Kermadec Trench, one in Alaska, and one down here across the uh, South Sandwich Trench there. So no uh, eight-pointers as of yet, but hey, could be building up here soon. You never know. The Atlantic Ocean, aside from that down there, fairly quiet. Uh, even on the... Uh, EMSC model globe. Not a whole lot going on across the rest of the uh, Mediterranean. Let's go ahead and check out Hawaii here real quick and see if anything else is going on here across the area. A um, little bit of scattered activity up north here along the uh, northern coast of the Big Island at 2.4 earlier this afternoon. And a handful of earthquakes out here. It looks like we're starting to broaden up here in terms of the uh, uh, the multitude of quakes and the and the region out here showing a little bit of elevated activity here on a broader scale uh, so it looks like maybe things may be starting to uh, move forward here maybe with some further activity there across the uh, big island in terms of volcanic activity so we'll go ahead and take a look at that here real quick see what's going on see if these are going to work tonight uh, latest informational statement there that was put out. Uh, the volcano is currently not erupting. Obviously, this was put out today. Still sitting at an advisory in yellow. Low to moderate rates of seismicity at the summit and along the uh, fault systems continue. Uh, so let's see what we got in terms of the station data. Uh, the tilt meter up here at the summit. Taking a little... Um, I'm not even going to mess around with that right now. I'm going to refresh this and we'll use this browser because sometimes, for whatever reason, it does not like the Google um, Chrome web browser. But here's our inflation at the summit area. Not a huge uptick. Obviously, this is very uh, minor compared to the large thing, uh, the large scene of things, so to speak, here. Uh, you know, this is a major displacement of magma back in February 1st, around the, the first. Uh, we've seen that activity stir up there at the summit. A lot of magma displaced off to the southwest rift zone. Since then, we're kind of going up, but, uh, you know, this is maybe a little bit more up than uh, these little previous events. But we'll continue to watch that. There's not a, a whole lot of change happening right there across the area for now. <coughs> as far as the seismic activity goes a couple smaller earthquakes out there no major movement though to note uh, across the area i don't know why it doesn't like the uh my normal web browser here here i've uh, used it uh, quite a few times here but uh for whatever reason the cl well see now it wants to work <laughs> i don't know don't know maybe maybe they're messing with me i guess i'll have to just go with the flow all right, um, let's see what else we got here. Anything else going on here? Iceland, we've got to check that right because that is a uh, kind of an interesting area right now. Uh, really not a whole lot of earthquake activity occurring. 24 earthquakes in the last 12 hours. And I, I, I've said it many times in the past, the key to watching the Iceland area is the divergent zones across the North Atlantic and up here north of Iceland area. And there's not a whole lot of earthquake activity happening out here. It seems to start down here uh, a little bit uh, in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And then eventually it seems like it wants to work up here across this area. And that's when we see elevated uh, magma movement and displacement up here across the area. But there's really not a whole lot going on here uh, for now. Storm Prediction Center. Uh, current day outlook, uh, current day one outlook, show, still shows some thunderstorm activity out here across the west coast. There's not a whole lot going on here uh, in terms of major severe weather. Uh, the extended forecast, day five, day six, day seven, day eight, not a whole lot being put out here by the folks there at the Storm Prediction Center. Uh, but we are heading into springtime here in a, in a month or so, so things could get interesting out here across the uh, southern plains. And you know, this general area, uh, definitely where severe weather tends to pick up. Um, our current disorganized low pressure system out here across the west coast will continue to go northward. Um, and that will bring clearing skies out here across California for the most part, giving us time to dry out. 
it looks like our next system here is going to be a cold one we do have a split flow in terms of the jet stream out there i checked that out last night uh, one portion of the jet going up way up north and coming down and the other one swinging down south here which will bring some moisture out here to the southeast but uh, this is going to bring in a lot of colder air not a whole lot of precipitation so a little taste of winter um and uh, maybe our next decent storm will ring in around the first of march it does show quite a bit of rainfall and some, some snowfall out there uh, in california there's some of that subtropical moisture there in the uh in the gulf i believe that's from that southern jet and um you know it, it's wow look at that low pressure off the coast of florida that is crazy but uh notice on the west coast as well so uh, things are going to stay fairly wet, I believe, into March. Uh, the weather models had predicted a very wet January, February, and March. And so far, they have been fairly accurate in terms of the El Nino effect out here across the West Coast. So uh, we'll see how this plays out. This is a ways out into the, uh, you know, the first week of March. But uh, for the most part, these weather models have been uh, fairly accurate. Uh, in terms of accumulated precipitation out here, let's see what we got. Uh, we'll run this all the way through. Um, variable, right? Obviously, this is a GFS total accumulated precipitation map. Pacific Northwest into Washington and Oregon. They've been kind of getting gypped here recently, right? But hey, you guys get rainfall all the time. So let us folks down here in California enjoy some of the wet stuff. I like the greenery too. So sharing is caring. All right, uh, so either way, it does look like a broad area out here of some moisture coming in over the next couple weeks. Um, what else do we have out here, folks? I think that's about it uh, in terms of activity. Uh, tomorrow is uh, Wednesday, at least for me. It might be Wednesday, obviously, out in the East Coast in um, Central Time. But uh, for now, seismograph stations, fairly quiet. Not a whole lot going on there. And uh, we'll just continue to watch things. There's not a whole lot, a whole lot of elevated uh, earthquake activity out here for now. Have a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys back here tomorrow morning. Wednesday. Wednesday morning. Have a good one.